This short lesson is about the normal force, and it is very closely related to the lesson on Newton's third law, which deals with situations involved involving, excuse me, two bodies that are in contact. Okay, and the normal force um, is a specific type of um, force that um, originates from um, the contact of an object with a surface. So looking at Newton's third law specifically, let's say we have a baseball and the surface of a baseball bat. Um, we can analyze the forces that are happening. Of course, the bat produces a force on the baseball, but the baseball creates an equal and opposite force on the bat. And so what we do is that we create two free body diagrams, uh, one for each object. So the ball, of course, moves in a certain way because it's been hit by the bat and it has a force acting on it. And the bat also responds to the force of the ball. When the body that's receiving the action force is a surface, this force is called the normal force. Okay, so any time that we have two bodies and, and one of them happens to be a surface, like the ground or a tabletop, the reaction force is called the normal force. And as the term normal implies, it's always perpendicular to the surface itself. So here we have a situation where we have a block sitting on a horizontal table. And of course the normal that the block receives from the table is pointed perpendicular at 90 degrees to the surface itself. And of course the block is also being pulled down by gravity. In the case where we have a block on an incline, the normal, once again, is perpendicular to the surface, and here gravity is directed downwards. And so these are two examples of where the normal force acts. Here's a, a very typical example. <clears throat> a person of mass 40 kilograms is sitting on the is sitting on a box. And what's the value of the normal force? So here's a little diagram of the person sitting on a box. And of course, the person's sitting there. So their acceleration is zero. And if we draw a free body diagram of the person, the forces that are acting are gravity pulling the person down and the normal force from the box pressing upwards. Because the acceleration is equal to zero, we know that the net force is going to be zero. <laughs> and the net force is just the difference between these two forces. So the normal force pointed up is positive. The force of gravity down is negative because forces, after all, are vectors. And the sum of these two things is zero. And really what this means is that the normal is equal to the force of gravity. And in this case, of course, gravity is mg, which is 40 times 9.8. And we have the normal force being 392 newtons in the upwards direction. If we go and look at now an extension of that problem, here's example two, same person from example one, but is harnessed to a long rope. And um, a friend is actually now pulling above. And the force, uh, the friend, excuse me, is pulling upwards on the rope. So it kind of makes the person feel like they're being lifted by um, this rope from, from above. So let's compute the new normal force now. And of course, here's a little diagram of the situation. <clears throat> and our new free body diagram looks very similar to what we had before. We've got gravity pointing downwards, the normal force pulling up, pushing up, excuse me, and now we've got these, this additional force of the rope 
pulling in the upwards direction. So one way to think about this is that the box doesn't have to supply as much of a normal force to support the person because they've got this extra rope that's pulling up. And so in this case, again, the person's not accelerating. The person's just sitting there. And so if F net is equal to MA, once again, F net's equal to zero. And F net is a combination of now these three forces. The normal force, which is positive because it's in the upwards direction. The force of the rope, again, the rope pulls the person upwards, so it's positive. And gravity pulls the person downwards, so it's negative. We can rearrange because what we're after is we're after the normal force. So let's keep the normal force on the left side of the equation and move everything else to the right. And now we can sub in our numbers because we know that the force of gravity is mg. And we know that the force of the rope is 92. So when we compute this, we get 392 minus 92 and we have 300 newtons up. And so the force, basically the new normal is 300 newtons, which is less than what we, what we got in example one. And of course that's expected. The box doesn't have to supply as much force to keep the person in place because the rope is helping with that. And this, in essence, is, is the principle that guides the normal force. We're going to use the normal force extensively when we talk about friction in the next lesson because the normal force, as we will discover, is very, very important when we're investigating friction between two surfaces.